helm versus operators. This is the showdown of the century. Which technology is going to win? If you want to know, you're going to want to stick around because I am here to tell you which one of these techs is going to end up winning and taking domination of all your software needs in Kubernetes clusters. So before we get any further, you might as well like and subscribe. Let's get into it. channel. All right, we all know that there is a huge battle going on between Helm and the operators. I think you're wrong. So if you're watching this video, you most likely are a little confused as to what Helm, you're either a little confused as to what Helm and the operators are, or you're here to uh, rage on me for not understanding myself what Helm and the operators are. Because honestly, Helm and operators serve kind of different purposes. Now, you can use uh, both of them to do kind of each other's jobs, but they actually work best together. So let me, let me demonstrate this. I think that when the operator framework came out, the best example of a good operator at that time was the operator that was created to manage etcd. And why do I think etcd is such a great example? I'm not saying that the etcd operator is the greatest operator or anything, but I think that it was a great example. And the reason is etcd has a lot of operational knowledge when you add a new etcd node to your cluster. It's not just standing up a new image. That's not what it does. If you read Helm, Helm says that it is the package manager for Kubernetes. So package managers, when you went to install etcd the manual way, let's, let's just use apt or zipper or whatever you use as a package manager, you would tell it to install. And then as soon as it was done installing, you need to give a uh, etcd, several other things to let it join the new cluster. Not only this, you would have to tell the old cluster members, the old etcd, the ones that are already in it, so you have two etcd members, you would have to tell the other two etcd members that there was a third one coming. If you didn't, then you wouldn't be able to let that third one join the cluster. So because of this, uh, in the classical sense, you would use apt, you would install uh, etcd, and then you would go through all the steps, all the operational steps to join that etcd node to the old cluster or the, your current cluster of nodes. And this is where the old package manager would kind of drop out. And this is exactly where Helm also would be uh, most likely to stop working as well and the operator to come in. The operator is operational knowledge. Uh, that's the best way I think that I've heard it described at this point. It's operational knowledge. And this is where it brings in operational knowledge. So in Kubernetes, there's already these controllers and these controllers uh, control things like pods. So that's a, a Kubernetes, uh, already well-defined. There is a controller that controls pods and whether they're scheduled and what to do if one fails. And all the operator does is classically, when you see an operator, there's two parts to an operator. There is the, the custom resource definition, the CRD, which when you do kubectl git pods, that's a CRD or a resource definition. It's not a custom one, it's one built in. And then you have this operator or a controller that does things based off of that. So with your pods, you have this controller that says, hey, if one goes down, let's stand one up. In the etcd operator, you can say, well, if a etcd node goes down, here are the steps, the operational steps. Stand up a new pod with etcd, then tell all the other etcd nodes that there, there is this new node with its IP address and 
all its other stuff, and then go ahead to this node and start running etcd so it can join the cluster. And all that operational knowledge it then exists in this controller, and it can handle all this operational knowledge. So this is really what separates etc uh, not etcd, operators from Helm. Helm is the package manager. In the classical sense, it would be apt. And the operator is your DevOps engineer. It's all the steps that you would have to take manually when you installed that new node, but you're automating them. It's just automation scripts, and it's extending Kubernetes to do the things that it does naturally with pods and other resources like uh, services or service cl uh, storage classes. So really, an operator comes down to handling that operational knowledge, that runtime knowledge, and Helm comes to package management. So this is where both can really coexist quite well because you can use Helm to install an operator. And so they can really coexist. It's not really uh, the Helm versus operators was mostly a clickbait. I know, I'm a terrible person. But mostly they coexist and do different jobs, really. Um, you don't use Helm to embed operational knowledge into it, and you don't use an operator to just install a uh, MySQL database. Now, if you had operational knowledge around MySQL database, then that would be a time to start looking at an operator and what it can do for you. If you don't, and you just want to make sure that the database exists, Helm is a great choice. All right, and now I know that a lot of you guys know that I personally don't use Helm, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But that doesn't mean that Helm is bad or that I don't uh, approve of its use. I, I think that it's great. Uh, there's reasons I don't use it, and we can get into why I don't use it personally. Uh, I don't mind using it uh, the last, last few places I've worked. I've all used Helm, uh, and that's actually from that experience is why I don't like Helm, but Helm is fine. So Helm is your new apt, your new zipper, your new chocolatey, your new package manager. That's, that's what Helm is. Your operators are your Python scripts that have always been running on some cron. That's what it is. It's those cron jobs. Um, that sit out there that you have to check on. That's what these things are, and that's how they should be looked at and treated. And if you look at them in that sense, they make so much more sense. This isn't a battle. There isn't a winner. They are pretty much complementary uh, tools. Uh, you might need to use one and the other to solve the same problem. Um, so that's really all I have to say on this subject. It's a pretty simple subject, but I wanted to get it out there because I've heard a lot of people have confusion over this. It's a legitimate thing, especially if people new in the space. This question comes up more often than not um, because I, I think the real confusion comes around when people th see things get installed by an operator, whether you're using Rook, which does all your storage, there's an operator there that's doing these things. And the operator really has operational knowledge of these backend databases like Ceph. But the reason is it's operational knowledge. It's not because you're using the operator as a package manager. The operator is not a package manager. It never has been, never will be. It's just a YAML file. And if you install it with just the YAML file, that's fine. But you could just as easily install that with a Helm chart. And Helm is your package manager, and it's made to share a, a designed setup. So in Helm, you can create a whole package and share that amongst your team, amongst anybody else out there. So I can make a Helm package and post it to the a Helm repository, and then anybody can install it. Uh, on any of their clusters, just like uh, Ubuntu PPAs and um, uh, OpenSUSE's open build service repositories. 
It, it's just like that, so that you can share these packages that you made uh, amongst other Kubernetes clusters, whether it be your own team or somebody else's team. So anyways, this was just designed to be a really quick, high clickbait, uh, little talk, my point of view. There is no competition here. They There never was a competition. Uh, I kind of made up the whole competition. Although I say I made it up, it has been legitimate questions asked to me. Uh, so anyways, I thought I'd give just a little bit of time to give my thoughts on both of those. Um, we can, I do need to give, uh, oh, I actually, I've been, leave me a comment if you'd like. I've been thinking about doing an operator in half an hour. I've been thinking about doing it as a live stream. Anyways, if somebody would like that and thinks that would be fun where we build a, a stupid operator, obviously you don't build an operator that does anything interesting in 40, or 30 minutes. But, if that's something you would like to do, uh, I've been playing around with some operators. I'm no operator guru, but uh, uh, that's something I've been thinking about doing. And leave me a comment. Let me know if that's something you'd like to do. And we can cover these technologies more in depth individually, as I think that there's a lot. And I know, I know I've promised to customize. I've promised to kept. These videos are coming. Those videos take a lot more time. Anyhow. I hope you like this. I hope you learned something. If you did, please subscribe. It means a lot to me, uh, just because it means I'm helping some people out. If you did not like this video at all, go ahead and subscribe and hit the alert button so that you'll get alerted when there's new videos. You can watch those videos and see if they're getting any better for science.